all we were putting in the back, and little old young ones run around there crying. I said, Mary, I said, I expect that baby's cold as we need to cry. She says, I'll give him something to warm him up. Well, I just spanked his butt and said, said, set him on a bench, you know. But Mary was a big woman. I never forget, had a little old calf that was bad to switch you with her tail. And she and I hammered her. She'd you? push against you when you were milking. <laughs> Well, she tried that with Mary, and Mary, I think, weighed more than the cow. Because mm -hmm. she stepped on Mary's foot, and Mary jerked it out from under, and she got cow in the stomach, and so helped me, that cow come up off the ground. <laughs> she hit her sorry. But what I was going to tell you about Winfrey, Mary went to the hospital, and Winfrey did his own cooking back to the Rainbow Deal. And I don't know how good Winfrey could cook, but what he did when he got through eating, rather than washing his plate, whatever he had, he just covered it up. He turned his plate over upside down on the uh, old cheesecloth tablecloth. Yeah. And that way, when he come back in the time, all he had to do is turn back over and start eating again. <laughs> that's, a, that's a true story. Well, why I didn't put it in the refrigerator? Do you have a refrigerator? I don't even know remember when he had a refrigerator or not. Might have had an icebox. It's been a long time. Well, you know, that ain't too crazy. I've got a, I mean, I, I don't believe I could do that because I don't like to blend food. I like to blend food, but not over time. Right. But I make a pot of coffee on Sunday morning, a great big all little holes, them perker pots, you know. Right. And whatever ain't drunk, I just, after it cools off, I set it in the refrigerator, and I go down and get me a cup of coffee on Monday morning and stick it in the microwave. Well, I do too. I go do the same thing. I, I mean, make, I don't even take it out of the coffee pot. I make about two pots a week is what I do, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I put it in the refrigerator, and I just get me a cup. Well, and I, I think it's better, but I also make my coffee out of tank spring water because the city water has too much chlorine in it. I don't make, I make mine out of well water. Do you? What? That had been run through a filter. Huh? It's been run through a filter because I've got sulfur water and I filter mine. Oh, you have filter, uh, sulfur water? Yeah, I've got a filter on the faucet. Yeah, and I, but feel I, it I, get, I get me usually about 10 gallons of tank spring water per week, you know. And I I use it for my cooking. I use it for my coffee. You know where the, I don't think you can even get water there now. But the best water you can get between here and Demery, instead of going to Tank Springs, of course you don't live at Demery anymore, but you go right by there. You know where um, up above Fat Bears, on up there and on the left, there's a there's a there's a place that sells rock and landscape and stuff and everything. There on the left. You know, what I'm like about? There, yeah. you know, they've got some rocks sitting out there. And if you look, there's an old spring house sitting over the side of the road. You're talking about going up Denver? Yeah, up oh, Sweet, yeah. Up sweet water, Spring House. water still comes out of the spring house. Well, you know who built that spring house? Uh, uh, is the, uh, coffee. Who? Hey. You're talking about on the left now, yeah. going home. Yeah. Up there on the left, got where a little spring. Get, where you get to Hicks. Yeah. Yeah. Right up there. Uh, uh, yeah. Now, Denny, Denny had a spring house down there on the right. Had a had a uh, manor pond stuff. Yeah, there. yeah, I know that. Well, I'm talking right up there on the left. It's a little bitty block house. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know. Well, I can tell you who built that. Who? Me and my daddy. Did you? Yeah. Who'd you build it for? Frank Lamb. Uh Frank Lamb. Frank Lamb. Built that in 1970, and there's there's some tiles down through there. He had a business, sir. At that, well, he was building at that time, and my daddy laid the blocks, and I mixed the mortar, and we put the roof on it. We poured the concrete. There was a, there was a big old, we put a barrel or something down in there to catch water and let it accumulate. Right. And he, he, and the spring ran all the time. Right. But he let that water, he pumped that water down to his, his uh, business down right. there. And he had a place down there, had another. We put in another thing down there where he could keep his miners and miner box. And there was some road tiles we put in down there, and we built the abutment for them out of blocks and, and mortar. And I remember he was talking about he was wanting to really, he was afraid that stream coming down through there when it flooded, it'd wash him out. And he was talking about he was going to put in some one inch, I mean some one, he, he wasn't going to put them just a one foot tile in there, he was going to put three or four of them one foot tiles in there, and that'd sure carry that water. 
And I told him, I said, can you get a three-foot towel? And he said, well, yeah. I said, well, one, one three-foot carry a lot more than one three-foot towel will hold will carry more water. If it wasn't for resistance, it would carry the same. But it will carry more water than nine one-foot towels. Right, and yeah. he couldn't believe it. But he took me at my word, and he put in a three-foot towel, and they've never had a flood there that, that right. took anything out. Yeah. Because you go with the, the area of the circle. Right. With my oh, I know that. Okay. Pie. Pie. Pi are not yep. the only thing that are round. Pi times squared. three squared yeah. is nine I thought pi. I pi was round, but you had to say it's squared. Nine pi instead of three pi, right. it's three times as much. Right. Yeah. And if you want to build a tile or anything like that, just call Bob. He's a tile expert. He's also a, <laughs> a expert in several things. But if you need any concrete to keep it washing away. Yeah, that right. Them and butt much and that sort of thing, you know. Uh, I know you were kind of... Uh, uh, concerned about the uh, longevity of what you had done there, out there. But if you'd done it all out of ditch concrete, you wouldn't have had to worry. There was one reason that we didn't. What? There wasn't any Dixie concrete. It's been a long that. time ago. Uh, I believe that. It's been, that was 42 years ago. That's not long. I can well, Big Dixie Concrete has just been in business about 40 years. I remember back 42 years just like it was yesterday. Yeah, but Dixie Concrete has just got about 40 years experience right. instead just of 42. Just like it was yesterday, you know. But they do know how to make concrete. they got that secret family recipe. All that skill and knowledge and know-how. Professionalism, they've learned yeah, they the hard way of being professional. I guarantee you don't have to worry about the road washing away if you do it out of ditch of concrete. No, sir. No, they got it they got, So you don't have to worry about your septic tank filling or falling or collapsing, you know. Well, you cave I'd, in. Did I show you that picture of that fella back at the cement truck over that septic tank? <laughs> he was sitting in there. I forget how much he said it cost, cost the company to get that truck out. <laughs> that ain't good. Well, that's Dixie Concrete. You know where they're at. They're down there at Dixie right. Concrete. They sell all sorts of septic right. system supplies. They don't sell steps in the concrete variety, right. but they'll certainly pour them if you'll get them all formed up and holler at them. They appreciate your business, and we do too. If any of you people like UG TV, send me an email. Ron1043 at... No, I see. Do it a different way. Yeah, Ron... Ron, let's do it this way. Ronnie at hillbilly.tv. I'd like to know if you, how we can improve this other than just turn it right, off and yeah. stay at the house. And yeah. we don't, we will not take any emails suggesting we do things that are physically impossible <laughs> or run out or run us out of town. But if you like the show, send me an email. Yep, you know, uh, I've been there, you know, being here on the four lane. You know, there's an advantage of having, you know, I, I remember the old one-horse towns. This is one road town through here, you know, and uh, they seem to love it because if anything moves and goes across town, they're going to have to go up and down Jack for a pipe. So that means the police, all they got to do is locate strategically, and sooner or later, <laughs> whoever they're looking for is going to ride up and down this road. And... Yep. Uh, so it makes it so nice they don't have to go out and patrol any back roads or or, or do anything. I'll just sit here and, uh, uh, you know, uh, wait fish, on a victim. Fish over a baited. Uh, just like a spider waiting yeah. on the web to wiggle. Yeah, so that's exactly right. And, you know, they, they really are hunting over a baited field when they sit along Joan Jack for a pipe waiting for somebody to go up and down the road. And, uh, that's what I told uh, that uh, sheriff mm -hmm. the other night when I came out from the big big orange bar, you know. He stopped waiting for me to come out, and I told him, I said, I would be against the law if you just hunt over a baited field. And uh, what do you mean? I said, you sat there and waited on me to come by. I said, uh, you know, I said, if that's not affirmative law enforcement in action, I don't know what is. You you remember the the. But a designated decoy, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> what I was that night, was a designated decoy. And you just let all them drunks go home while you were following me for five miles up Jacksboro Bay. 
Well, you know, that's the way it is when you hang around the wrong company. Yeah, Sherry was. Yeah, that's was. that same bar where that woman come down there and dumped her young, and ain't it? <laughs> same bar. Same bar, yeah. And uh, I, I tried to get them to take me in, but they wouldn't. No, you've been there before. Maybe they knew about it. <laughs> All righty. What else is going on? You know, I went to the uh, workshop at the county commission uh, the other night, and uh, you had all sorts of uh, proposals from uh, uh, being able to uh, legally, I mean, as far as the county is concerned, to legally handle snakes in a worship service. And, uh, you know, I think there was three commissioners not there last night. I might be wrong about the number. I didn't go last night. I didn't know it was going to be as no, interesting. No, Mrs. Nance wasn't there. Well, yeah, I and, didn't. And, uh, well, well, there was only, I think there was three commissioners out for different legitimate problems. Singley, well, Singley wasn't there on Monday night. Well, anyway, here's what I'm getting to. They had a vote there. See, our representative of the state, Mr. Powers, says that he will not go to the state to try to change the snake handling law without a recommendation from the county commission. Right. You know, that's that pass the buck yeah. mentality. So the county commission, every one of them, according to the reports I've read, praised this this religious thing and stood up for that man to be able to worship and do as he pleased, and then ten of them voted against it, two voted for it, I know one of them is a certain person who don't like me, but I appreciate her standing up right. for the right thing, I and I don't know who the other one was. But the whole point is, these people don't have any business telling these people how to worship. I know they're trying to take care of somebody, but let us take care of ourselves. I'm not going to any snake handling church because I'm afraid of snakes. I guess my faith ain't strong enough. And I ain't going to drink no poison or do none of that other stuff because I just don't want to take no chances. I'm afraid the day that, that I do that, my angel will be on vacation. Right. But them people got a right to worship as they please. And I credit them with enough sense not to hand a snake to a young one. So if they're an adult and they decide to go into snake handling business, let them have at it. If they're right... They will well, multiply and outnumber us, and if they're wrong, they'll soon buy it, die, right. by die out from, right. you know, attrition. If, if it's fine with me if they want to handle snakes, you know. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you know, it reminds me about uh, uh, the old boy from Tennessee. I may have told this story. I'm on, an old boy from Tennessee. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, on TV before. I'm going to tell it again, which I'm bad to tell stories the same over and over again. It seemed like this... Uh, a uh, fellow from Tennessee died, and he went up to heaven, mm -hmm. and uh, he knocked on the gate. St. Peter came to the gate. He said, yeah, we've been inspecting you. He says, but we've got just uh, some minor problems that, as far as uh, uh, letting anybody else in right at the moment, and we're kind of having to give everybody a little test to make sure that they, uh, they're qualified to come in through the pearly gate. He said, well, I don't know whether I'm qualified or not, but says, I'll take the test. So uh, St. Peter says, well, that's a real easy test. And he says, I'm going to let you uh, write down the questions and come back in the morning and you can give me your answers. So he says, I want you to tell me how many seconds there are in a year. How many seconds there are on the year? He wrote it down. 625,600 okay. seconds. Uh, also, I want you to tell me how many days of the week start with the letter T. So he wrote that down. He says, and third, I want you to tell me what God's name is. Well, old guy wrote it down. The next morning he was there bright and early knocking on the pearly gates. And St. Peter came. He says, uh, Says Ronnie, have you got your answers? Uh, I said, yeah, I think I got them all wrong. He said, well, let's see. Tell me how many seconds there are in a year. He says, 12. He said, 12 seconds in a whole year? That's all there is. He said, there's got to be more than that. He said, no. 
There's January 2nd, February 2nd, <laughs> March 2nd, uh, <laughs> April 2nd. So they, they appear, say, okay, I got you. I'm going to give you that. And that there are 12 seconds uh, in a year. He says, now, how many days of the week start with the letter T? He says, there are four. St. Peter says, oh, wait a minute. There's Tuesday and Thursday. How did you come up with thir uh, with four? He said, well, you forgot about today and tomorrow. St. Peter says, well, I'm going to have to have to give you that one, too. He says, all right, now tell me what God's real name is. The fellow said, oh, that's the easiest one of all. St. Peter says, it was. I said, yeah. He says, well, what's his name? He says, Andy. Andy. He says, how did you come up with Andy being God's name? <laughs> he says, well, everybody knows that. They do? He says, sure. Andy walks with me. Andy talks with me. Andy tells me that I am his own. His name's got to be Andy. So they let, him in, they let him in through the pearly gates. Do you remember the Twilight Zone episode where uh, a guy named Best, he ended up playing Roscoe P. Coltrain on the Dukes of Hazard. He had a hound dog, and he stopped. He, he died. He got lightning struck or something. And, him and, and his, his dog come by. And him and his hound dog was there walking down this road. And he stopped at this place he thought was heaven. And the guys would tell him what a great place it was. And he could see over the other cross fence. Some people seemed to be having a pretty good time. And, and he started just decided he'd go in. And the guy said, well, your dog can't go. Can't bring your dog in here. And he said, I can't bring my dog in there. And he said, no. He said, well, if my dog can't go here, I guess I'll just have to go to the other place. Can he get in there? And they said, yeah, he can get in there. And, Are you sure you're going to turn this down? Yeah, I, if he, my dog ain't good enough, I ain't either. I'm just going to go to the other place. So he went to the other place and turned out that's heaven. <laughs> he wouldn't go to hell because his dog wasn't welcome. <laughs> It's full of politicians and lawyers anyway. Well, you know, Roscoe, did you know he's a terrific guitarist? Uh, he's done more things than B. Roscoe P. Coltrane. Yeah, I know he that. is a, a tremendous guitarist and a singer. Yeah. He played, uh, I believe he was on, I think it was him, was on uh, Bonanza, I believe it was. And he was, they got him, he was kind of a drifter, and they got him. Huh. Yeah, we're all right. They got him um, because he um, um, they thought he'd kill somebody, and he had, and they had him in jail, and he was singing, rim, rim, under the red rock, rim, rim. That's all he done while he was in jail, and he got out. But he was also, he was in three or four of them Twilight Zone episodes, and he was in one where he, he just snapped his fingers and, uh -huh. and he'd light his cigarette with it. Uh -huh. You know, he was, right. he was one of Satan's angels in that one. <laughs> uh, he's he's a character. I didn't say Roscoe P. Coltrane. Roscoe P. Coltrane. His name's Best. He was adopted when he was about two years old and got the name of Best, B E S T. Yeah, I remember he's that. He's still alive. He lives in North Carolina. Why? He lives in North Carolina. I know that, yeah. He's from North Carolina originally, I believe, isn't he? Uh, no. Or from Texas. No, neither one don't think. Now, he may have been adopted in North Carolina, but I think he's, I'm, 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 I ain't sure. Well, yeah. they didn't adopt me. I was born there. They, they, they evicted me. If they had adopted you, they'd want your money back. <laughs> Let's see if I can figure it out. B -E you know what the uh, uh, state motto is for uh, the state of North Carolina? What is it? It's the Quambadere. It's what? Esse quam videri. I don't speak none of them American That's foreign Latin. Language. I said them foreign language. That's I Latin. figured that's Latin. That means it's better to be than to seem. There he is. Okay. That's, Who is that? That's him. Catching smallmouth bass in the New River in West, of West Virginia. Yeah, he's 80-something years old now. That was old Roscoe. Yeah, Roscoe P. Coltrane. Let's see here. Let me find out. Uh, <laughs> How about that? See where he was born. All right. Meanwhile, I was back to the uh, uh, 
uh, workshop at the county commission. I didn't get down there last night to the actual meeting, which I understand it didn't. <laughs> it did not go according to script. No, but it got interesting, I reckon. And uh, you know, uh, boy, they they don't want any uh, body to say anything to the contrary of what's going on. They don't want you to complain, no. Nope. No, they sure don't, you know. And uh, you got to... He was born in Powderly, Kentucky. Was he? Okay. Yep. His original name was Jules Guy. Guy? Mm-hmm. D-Y-E? Yeah. No, G-U-E. Uh, G-U-Y. Uh, D. G-U-Y. Okay. Jules okay. Guy, he was born July 26, 1926 in Powderly, Kentucky, and he was adopted by the Best family. Um, let's see here. How about that? Folks, we're boning up on the Roscoe P. Cole train. <laughs> I told Colette, she's, uh, 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 she's computer uh, literate. Uh, you go on the on to go on the internet and look up uh, the Black Dutch. She's her ancestors are from Belgium, mm -hmm. and I believe Colette is a uh, a prominent name. In Belgium. She's not one of them uh, uh, Melungeons, is she? No, you know, uh, they group the Black Dutch into the Melungeon group a lot of times, but it's not really, uh, it's not a mixture of races, the, the Black Dutch were not. Uh, they were supposed to be a homogenous group of uh, Arabs, really, is what they are. Well, they've decided that they've got a little bit of that their Negroid blood. Uh, not not the Black Dutch. Yeah, no, no, I'm talking about the, the Melungeons. The Melungeons, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, they've done uh, some DNA testing, you know. But they've done some DNA testing on the Black Dutch, mm -hmm. and they found out they originated somewhere down south of Baghdad. Moors? Huh? Were they Moors? No, uh, they think that they were... Uh, one of the lost tribes of Israel, well, remnant. What, what were the Moors? Were they? Uh... Moors were. Uh, they were. They were Muslims. Yeah. yeah. And they were from uh, the northern Africa, Mediterranean area. And uh, kids, don't take notes. You make have this test in school. We they, don't want you to you repeat know, they, it. They invaded Spain, took it over at one yeah. time, and. Uh, but uh, the Black Dutch DNA indicates that they were born somewhere down around south of uh, Baghdad, and which seems to add some credence to the fact that there might possibly be a remnant of one of the lost tribes of Israel. Are there really any tribes lost, or did they just lose the Ark of the Covenant? And what? Are there really any lost tribes, or did they just lose the Ark of the Covenant? They didn't lose it. I, uh, hadn't the Ethiopians got their ark? Well, I've heard that, but nobody yeah. admits it. Right, yeah. I heard, heard the Ethiopians were still guarding the ark of the covenant. Well, I've heard that too. Uh, if you need any propane, go down to Diggers, 5625444, right in the middle of the road in Sawmill Holler. He's got propane for all seasons, and he has that flavored propane, so you can give him. Oh, I went cruising down through there the other morning at 7 o'clock. And he was down there with his door open at 7 o'clock. Was he uh, snorting that propane? That their hickory? Well, what is he snorting that propane or not? That's their hickory flavored propane? Yeah. You, ever, you ever hear anybody talk after uh, sniffing helium? Uh, you mean that? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, folks, if you've got any friends, call them, tell them to watch this show. It's good. <laughs> But meanwhile, back to the county commission okay. uh, workshop, you know, they had a report by the uh, uh, incubator group, you know, you and get it was all a glowing report. You know, they were so tickled that uh, they had rented a 2,000 
dollar, two thousand and some odd dollar a month. Nearly three. Huh? Nearly three. Nearly three thousand dollars a month uh, floor in the uh, bank building down at Jacksboro. And with all the empty spaces we have in our governmental business, they had to go into corporate banking welfare. And that's exactly what that is. Uh, when they uh, donated our money to rent a, a I got nothing against the bank renting uh, uh, office space and that sort of thing, but let them rent it and get somebody else's money besides mine. Oh, uh, TV. Hello, how are you doing? Oh, it's Akbar. Hey, Akbar. Oh, goodness gracious. I was watching our web show and I just wanted to call and talk about the comedy club. Yeah, I heard about the myth of Snake Charmer Man, and I tell you, that is a very dangerous practice. Well, it's about like hog killing, I reckon, you know. Yes, I know. It is It is very bad, because I think the people could probably get very hurt if he tries to snake charm with the Christianity. See, where I come from, we snake charm with the music, okay? You do not the snake charm with the Holy Jesus. <laughs> Your snake charm with the music, okay? Well, now, you know they've got music at church. Well, I hope that they're playing the music then, because the snakes, they do not like uh, the, the Christianity, no. Well, you're used to them old Muslim snakes, baby. Yeah. Them yeah you, you use them kind where you have to play the pipe, you know, they, and they slowly did, sliver did you say up. Did you know. Muslim? Yeah. No, I am not a Hindi, Muslim, Ronnie. Hindi? I am Hindu. Hindu. Yes, well, I told you that from the beginning. I am a Hindu man. You do realize that these snakes are really your relatives. Oh, my goodness. Well, they could be. One of your relatives reincarnated. Yeah. Oh, no, not the snakes. I, yeah, I do not well, believe in the In fact, it could be one of mine, because so one of them's got beady eyes just like some of my relatives. Yeah. I tell you what, though, I, I, I think that if the reincarnation happened, that the very bad people, they would be the snakes, because, uh, you know, the snakes, well, they that, are I very know, bad. I know, that's why the, the word snake always conjures up an image of a politician or a lawyer. Yeah. Lord you know, they do, you know how you can tell whether it's a snake or a politician that's been run over on the highway? <laughs> there were skid marks in front of the snake. Yep. My goodness. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I tell you, that is a very funny joke. I tell you, I'll broke up over it. <laughs> so what else is going on in Well, um, I don't really have much more to say, Mr. Andy. Are you watching this on Ugg TV? Yes, I am watching it on Ugg TV did in my notice, tarantula part. Did you notice that we carry uh, uh, two versions? TV and the Fox Sports Channel and the Campbell County Plain Truth and, and uh, Channel 12 all on one website. Yes, I have seen all of your videos on there. And I think uh, Mr. Gillum's Plain Truth is very on. It, it is on there too, right? Yes, you said you know, the Plain Truth. You know, the TV. It'll bring you right there. You've got all of the local news in the county. Well, I think there's a television station at Gilco we don't carry it. As soon as they get on the internet, we'll put it on there. Oh, Lordy. Have you got uh, Mr. Gibson on there? He is a very funny little Buddha man. Yeah, he'll be on there. If they keep their side going, he'll be on there. Oh. Time. That's next week, I think. So he, he is going to be on the internet as well? Yeah, we got it all. Oh, my you. goodness. He is going to be a happy little fat man. You go to UGTV.tv and scroll down. There's four. Channels, okay, okay. Channels. Well, I will look at uh, Mr. Gibson's TV show. I am very happy to hear that he is getting on the internet because I seriously thought he was just too old. No, he, he'll be on there as long as they maintain their staff. I mean, we've got him out there on the other TV. Right oh, now, they've got, a, they've got a church service going on there on Channel 12. Oh, lordy, lordy. They are not charming the snakes, are they? And, uh, and playing truth, that's... Uh, it's there, all you got to do is push the button and watch it. It's ready to go, and the uh, sports channel's offline, and, and one of our HBTV channels is not on because we're on the other. Right there at the top of the page, you can see us there, just grinning at you. 
There I am. I'm the good looking one. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Well, I'm going to go ahead and let you all go, okay? Thank you, Ogmar. There you are. All right. Good night. There you are. I forgot to ask you what the uh, oil futures were. Well, they got any oil in India. I got oil everywhere. We got fruit flies here. <laughs> uh, did we tell them about vital care, Bob? I don't think so. I was going to mention, and uh, you know, being here on the highway, I get to see what what is going up and down the road a lot, you know. And uh, I've not only noticed uh, vital care's ambulances, you know, but I've been seeing ambulances from Bell County, Tennessee, Kentucky. Uh, I mean, Bell County, Kentucky from uh, Scott County, Tennessee. You know, Scott County does not have a, uh, a hospital. Mm -hmm. And it looks like uh, RL would go back over there and drum up some money to get a hospital. You know, uh, I had a little girl come over uh, and work at the bank from Scott County, and she was uh, talking about uh, RL, and I said, uh, I'm talking about RL Gibson. and. Uh, I said, well, maybe you ought to uh, get R.L. to come back home. <laughs> and I said, uh, if he does, I said, our loss will be Scott County's loss. Uh, <laughs> if you need to go to the hospital or just need a, generally need a ride in an ambulance, we just take our advice and use Vital Care, 562-9370. Vital Care of Campbell County. Right. That's right. They, they not only, you know, for a while they were they were picking up all the county slack here in uh, the Violet uh, uh, after dark. That's where they abandoned well, terrible, wasn't you it? you know, uh, that kind of got a little bit, uh, great a little bit on uh, the EMS here in Campbell County. They said, well, everybody knows that we don't have enough ambulances to uh, staff and to look after La Follette, Tennessee. So they said, we will look after it. So they moved the ambulance up here to look after La Follette and took one away from Carryville. So Carryville is, is without an ambulance. Anywhere. No, they're not. They've got uh, vital care. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Any, anywhere within reason, uh, and uh, vital care is having to pick up the slack down there. So if you're down in Carryville and you need an ambulance, call 9. Five six two nine three seven zero. That's Vital Care Medical Transportation, and they'll be there just as soon as uh, you call them. They'll haul you around, but if you need any real serious hauling, you might want to try Ridge Runner Trucking. Right. Five well, eight makes, seven one twenty four ten is their well, number. Well, we'll strap you in a gurney and put you in one of the Ridge Runner trucks. Yeah, eight want. seven one twenty four ten, and they do heavy hauling, gravel right. and compost and field dirt and rock and all them are big truck kind of stuff. Right. They know how to spread it, too. Not only can they haul it, but they can spread it. They can spread it deeper than Bob. Yeah. Spread right out. Yeah. <laughs> Slick. 871-2410. Right. So uh, be sure and call them. They're good people. You know, uh, now's the time to go ahead and get that gravel embedded into your driveway. Uh, where you don't have to worry about a barn up this fall and this winter in your own driveway or in your own parking spot. And uh, we're going to have to do just a little bit of, uh, of uh, rock hauling out there in the uh, uh, native plant arbit arboretum. Yeah. Yeah, you need to come get some of them winders out of my arboretum. Hey, yeah, well, I've been meaning to come over and do that. And maybe we float that uh, houseboat. That sounds like fun. Yeah. You get the basement dug yet? Huh? Get the basement I dug. Have, I have a two-story two -story, uh, houseboat. You got a basement down there, you know. Uh, you want to do that? You know that? Are you catching any fish out there at your place? No, you have to fish before you catch any. I reckon and my chance is about, it's like a lottery. You've got a chance if you buy a ticket. <laughs> if you don't, you ain't. Well, I ain't got no chance either way, so I don't even fish. <laughs> Oh, Lord. I might have come out there and show you how it's done. I wish I you come would. out there one night and fish. I didn't even get a nibble. Well, I've done that several times. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I've done that a lot, Bob. Have you? Didn't get a nibble, didn't even get a promise of a nibble. 
I'm going to have to take my garbage off tomorrow. Them fruit flies are getting ahead of me. <laughs> oh, one of them flies up your nose, it plum itches. <laughs> Can you get high snorting fruit flies? <laughs> Probably. Well, I don't know when you get as high as licking a frog. <laughs> you ever see that one where the frog is being swallowed by the big old bird and and the, and the frog got his hand around the bird's neck and won't let him swallow. Right. And the bird's there choking with the frog's head stuck down his neck. And the caption always says, never give up. If that frog can hold his breath long enough, he's going to win. <laughs> That's true, because the bird's going to fall over. Yeah. I've got some comedians out at my farm. you got a few got around a closer I, home. I got I got seven little Muscova ducks, and uh, there's and they from Oklahoma. It's so it's so personal that Elizabeth and Ashley voluntarily go out there and feed them in the afternoon, and they they will do all sorts of antics. And it says one of them yesterday said he wasn't nobody paying him any attention. They go up there going swimming pool out there for him. So he gets back and gets him a running start and leaps in the air and dives in <laughs> just to get attention, you know. <laughs> How old are they? Uh, they're, about, they, they're not 30 days old yet. You know, they're probably three weeks. and uh, uh, Their little wings haven't developed yet, even though they, they flap them, you know. And they, they're, they're pretty. Where'd you get them at? The mama hatched them. Where'd you get the mama at? Uh, I forgot what I got. I bought, bought a pair of Muscova ducks. Well, I actually bought four pair. Okay. That's eight, ain't it? Uh, That's well, eight. Let's see. No, I actually bought six pair. That's okay. twelve. All right. I You're got down one pair, one. and he still owes me five pair of ducks. You know, <laughs> he claims he can't find no, uh, any more Muscova ducks. Well, He's already paid, so uh, I haven't been up. He's up at Tazewell every Sunday. I haven't been up there too much lately, but he won't be expecting me, and I'll just go up there and find two or three pair of Muscova ducks, and I'll just load them up and, and take them home with me because he owes them to me. Well, I don't know much about Muscogee ducks. Well, uh, uh, I can't think. What's the real famous uh, uh, breed of ducks uh, that uh, migrate from... Uh, Mallard? Mallard, yeah. About all ducks are descendants from Mallards. Peking ducks, that's all, it, all your ducks. Now, wait a minute. A Peking duck is dead. Huh? A Peking duck is dead. Yeah, but uh, before, he, before he was killed... Uh, Except the mallard duck, and I was explaining this to Colette over in uh, uh, Asheville the other day, and I'm going to tell you what I told her because uh, they probably cut us off the internet. But when you breed, when a Muscova duck breeds with one of your other ducks, uh, they produce a uh, mule duck. A mule duck. Yeah, it's a mule duck. It's like a uh, a horse and a jackass abused as a donkey, and uh, or did you know that right there? Mule, produced as a mule, and uh, the mule will not. Uh, you see that right there? What is that? Is that a Muscova duck? Yeah, I'm talking about that right there. That's about, that's about the way they look. Mama looks like that. Right. Now the daddy out there has got a lot more white on it, and they are prolific. Uh, flyers. I mean, they can sail around up there with the with the hawks and the, the crows and whatever. Uh, now the old old daddy duck can't anymore. He's got some blooming fat and lazy. Uh, I don't know where he get off the ground unless he fell off a cliff. But they're interesting ducks, and when they're about 17 weeks old, if you enjoy eating ducks, uh, the Muscova duck uh, is the best eating duck, the best duck to eat that you'll ever find, and uh, delicious. <coughs> I don't know. I just eat one duck in my life. It's all right, but I never did fix right. another. 
Okay, what is that? Uh, it's two ducks. Yeah, okay. That's flying United. Well, they ain't flew yet. Huh? They, they ain't flew yet, but they've united. <laughs> They're flying United. <laughs> uh, there comes another one. They had moral support. And, uh, He says, my turn. <laughs> Folks, we Folks, ain't told we got, you about... We've got a porno show going over on this other channel. We ain't I... told you about Napa yet, and we just got four minutes left well, to talk about it. Well, I don't know what I can tell them about Napa in four minutes or not. They're located up here on the four lane across from IGA. They've been there many, many years. Got a big yellow sign that says NAPA, N-A-P-A, -A, National Automobile Parts Association. They have connections to bring you over a, 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 a quarter of a million automobile parts. Not only that, they bring you parts for your lawnmower, for your farm tractor, uh, for your stationary engine, for your alternators, or not alternators, but your generators. Uh, they can just get all sorts well, of things. Well, now, you're probably right the first time. Them alternators, them generators, they really got alternators on them. I know that, yeah, <laughs> I know that. Now, used to, they had generators, yeah. but now, now a generator ain't a generator. It's an well, alternator. Well, the generator's DC and the alternator's AC. Right, yeah. So, uh, got a little bit of both. You Up know. there across from IGA, 5629406 and 5629529. Right. And they got an oil change special out of Castro GTX. Right. It's, uh, what kind of oil is that? Castro. Castro. That's what you told me. Not Castro oil, but Castro oil. Got five quarts. Castro oil on a filter to fit your car for $20.99. You can't beat that. No. Nowhere in the world. You can go over to the Peps, boys, and get some of these old nondescript type uh, oil for about $21, $22. And, uh, you know, and plus you have to drive 60, 70 miles round trip. Nowhere in the world. Just go up here and see Randy at Napa Auto Bars. And they can pick you up for that oil space. You also got one of the best buys on lawnmower batteries you'll find anywhere, anywhere for the amount of cranking amps they got, you can't beat it, $27. They did have a $5 rebate, but that's all gone, which made it cost $22. $27, one of the best buys, plenty of cranking amps on their uh, lawnmower battery. I got one that says down there three or four weeks at a time, go down there and it cranks right up. Well, I just have to start my lawnmower once a year. I wait till it dries in the fall and then mow it. We gotta go, folks. Glad you tuned in. We'll be right. on here again tomorrow night. We'll also be on Channel 12. Right. Um, 8 o'clock tomorrow night, ain't it? What? 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. 8 bells tomorrow afternoon on UvTV.tv or go to VioletNews.com or go to Hillbilly.tv. It don't make no difference, you know. Just open your window to look out and you'll see our smoke signals. Yeah, you go, you go to the, uh, the com for all the current news, obituaries, uh, police and fire eavesdropping, right. and UGG TV. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to sign off and figure out how. <laughs>